Good morning everyone. Can you believe I almost sold this lens? This very lens that I literally was one of my favorite lens ever. It was the lens I would take everywhere, that I would shoot with at night, that I would take on adventures, until, until, until something happened. And I'm gonna share with you what happened exactly, why I almost sold it, and why it's still in my hands. But for that, we're gonna go uh, shoot a little bit here in the airport because I've got about 30 minutes until my flight boards and I thought it was a great creative exercise to go have fun, uh, try to capture the light looks beautiful, it's entering the airport really nicely and it reminds me of like three years, four years ago when I did a video actually maybe in this airport. So let's see how this can feel. I put a little black mist filter on it. I think you're gonna love that. Let's get started. Woo. All right, let's get started guys. We have literally just a few minutes before my flight board so i might continue shooting when i get to san francisco which could be good i put a black mist filter right now on and i think it's going to be extremely extremely maybe too too much i'm trying to do uh, some slower exposure and honestly the this 24 millimeter is a lens i always raved about i absolutely loved it it was um a lens that would allow me to do everything basically and so much more and it was literally the perfect lens for night photography, for travel photography. You could crop in a little bit at, what do you call that, um, 35 millimeter if you wanted, if you have like a, especially on the A1. And it was great for so much time. I absolutely enjoyed every single moment with it. But one day something happened and that something was the release of another lens. That other lens did a few things for me. It actually made me shoot a little wider but another one maybe shoot a little tighter and just the fact that i would be able to um, shoot wider meant that i was able to shoot video at the same time as i would be shooting what do you call that my photos right and 24 millimeter when you shoot in yourself is a little tight but 20 millimeter is perfect it's not too tight so the 20 millimeter f1.8 came out and i was like even for astrophotography i was like oh this might be a little nicer than the 24 and i might enjoy it a little bit more if i'm super honest let's try to use those patterns on the floor to get something cool i'm shooting like everything around f16 right now but uh, i kind of don't want those like orange people on the left Let's try to go a little bit further. Here we go. What do you guys think? This looks better. Mm, boom. Yeah, I think we can go a little slower. Maybe. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere, okay. I think the pattern's cool, but... Uh, let's try to do a center composition here. And a little bit like this. I always try love to change the angles and go from uh, go from like middle, lower angle, higher angle, and and kind of decide after which one I prefer. I think it always looks better. And the 20 millimeter really changed everything because suddenly. When I had to pack a bag, I would have to hesitate between, hey, I'm gonna take a 20 millimeter and I'm gonna take a 24 millimeter, but I won't be able to shoot with a prime lens for video, at least to selfie mode. And that's just kind of tough, but the 20, look, you crop it and you arrive around 30, 35, and I love that, that, that focal range. So it's, it's like always hard to decide whenever you're gonna find a new um, which which one you kind of want to use you know and sometimes having too much gear just is like a paralysis so I decided that I would sell it uh, recently when I, when I was moving places and honestly I didn't yeah I didn't end up selling it I ended up keeping it because I put it back in my hands and I was like I really love this lens and the one four just makes it so nice and fun to work with but at the same time you're like I don't really want to 
I don't want to lose that lens, you know? So it's kind of hard. And right now I'm kind of reconnecting with it. I'm, and I'm thinking I don't need to film myself with a 20 as much as I used to. Now, another lens that's also tricky is that, what do you call it? The 35 millimeter 1.4. Why? Simply because uh, the 35 millimeter 1.4 is an awesome lens, especially if you're doing street, if you're doing weddings, anything. It's really, and even travel photography, I could literally go on a trip with just a 35 millimeter if it's very urban or... And so now, do you take a 35 and a 24? You know, it's, it seems a little redundant knowing that I can get 35 focal range with my 24. And that is the hard part when I have to decide. I'm, I'm always like confused at how to decide. So let me know in the comments if you have any uh, inputs around it and if you have any thoughts like 20, 24, 35, which one would you take? Because I feel like it's, it's just so hard to decide between those in my opinion. Now, I don't know how the photos are going to look like with the, with the mist filter on. Honestly, it might be like too, too smudge, especially because the light is really strong. Um, but it might give us uh, some cool vibes. I want to try to get like some like close up back shots of someone with a cool hat or even airline pilots walking. But I don't really see any right now. And what time is it? Yeah, I'm boarding in like five minutes. So I may continue shooting a little bit after my flight. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about, about those uh, dilemmas of uh, lens choice. And I'll tell you, whenever you're like in a creative block, using one of those older lens that maybe you haven't touched in a while, for me really does marvels. Suddenly it's like, Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't use it, but I see it. I see it now, and let's see what we can do. You know, kind of thing. Oh, I wanted to find that. Let's try to get it. For safety purposes, if you are traveling in small children, children, or strollers or large luggage, please use the nearest elevator when moving between floors. Thank you. Oh, women pilot even better. See, it's always like a, a difficult choice for me. But I love um, just using those lenses to get some new effects and having fun. This is cool. Oh, this came out really nice. I don't know what the effect is, but wow, that photo really comes out. I love it. I want to have someone walking and then like, you know, like back of the head kind of shot walking. But we need someone with a little bit of a character or something. Let's see. That's fun. And honestly, I don't know what you guys think, but Sony has been releasing tons of new cameras lately and I found it pretty confusing. I feel like they keep dropping new cameras and, and it's hard to keep up with and, and really understand what each camera does. I don't, I don't know if it's just me, but please let me know in the comments because I feel like it really, really increased recently and it's almost hard to, uh, to keep up with. Look at that little doggy. <laughs> hey doggy. Hey, hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, look at that. Okay, okay, like some outdoor shots. Oh, I actually have a great shot idea where I just recorded my intro. I think it's gonna look really epic. But let's see what we can do here. Oh, I like the leading line. So if we go like slower shutter speed, F16, boom, and get the people like kind of really, there we go. Yeah, I like that. This looks cool. Wow, I actually really like this one. I think the the angle of the terminal looks really epic. Hey, can we use this? 
Ooh. Kind of. I wonder what happens if we put water. <laughs> hey, have you guys done waterfall shots here? It's hilarious. Hey. Which reminds me, I need to fill up my water bottle. All right, let's see. Uh, tech, aperture. That, that's what I love, actually. I keep changing between when you're doing those kind of shots between F16 and, and auto, where it goes straight back to F4 or F14. That way you don't have... Actually, going all the way is also easy. I feel like I should make a compilation of all my airports uh, POVs into one at that point because there's been a, a lot and it's pretty cool. <sighs> that's the shot I was talking about. Yeah, that's the one. It's it's cool with the guy with the headphones. Ah, so much fun. Okay, what time? Ooh, I'm gonna have to go. All right, boarding soon. Boarding soon. Dun, 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 dun. What do you guys think of the look with the with the mist filter? I'm not. I'm, not, I'm usually not using one. Honestly, it's not something I'm uh, I'm big into. But in certain circumstances, and especially for portraits, it can come out really, really nicely. Okay, let's play with some reflections here. If we can get any. Oh, we can. All right. I feel like I always need to overexpose a little bit into in the airports. Uh, yeah, no, that's not the best. Uh oh, that's my flight. Stop in San Francisco. 8.55, 8.05, boarding soon. Okay, pre boarding soon. Oh no, they put the cart. Oh no. Oh wow, this looks so cool. Look at this. Wow, I love that reflection. This is epic. I don't know if I can move her cart. Just for the shot. Maybe. I don't want to, I mean, the lady is working, I don't want to disturb her too much. Okay, let's go again, F16. And slow shutter speed. Okay, what, do, what does it look like? That's not bad. That is not bad at all. Let's try again. And kind of wanted to get the perfect symmetry, but it's kind of tough. And Wait, let me. The trick here is that if you're doing, if you're taking sh shots like that and you're in single shots, you have to press every time and every time you move your camera again. So it's actually better usually to be in a, to go in burst and you just take a burst that way you're stable at least on the second shot oh wow look at that that makes like a big m this is really cool i love that so yeah that 24 millimeter i still love it i mean there is no way i would not use that for a whole trip you know it's like it's like one of those and it's so versatile you can do a few portrait boom you crop in a little bit and uh, and it does exactly what you want it to do, you know. But but ooh, pilot in the direct light. Let's get this going. Oh, let's see how we can get this. Maybe. Yeah, let me move to like manual here. Uh, actually, no. Just gonna compensate. There we go. That's fun. Okay, let me try again. I feel like I missed the other one. Oh, 
Ooh, once edited and once I have the preset on that, it's gonna be pretty cool. Kind of wish he was pointing the other way, could make a great portrait like directly of his face. But uh, yeah, but honestly, guys, it's something I'm trying to, to share is that it doesn't matter if you have five minutes or 30 minutes, you can always do something, you know, there is always something you can create. And I think creativity comes also from um, spending time pushing yourself to be creative in a way. You know, it's like, it's like, okay, what can I do now? And see what flows through. Even if it's hard, even if it doesn't feel natural after maybe five minutes, maybe you'll be like, you know what? Uh, I think, I think this is working out. And there's this great book that I was recommending in my newsletter. Uh, absolutely recommend you to be a part of the top five. It's a great newsletter I send about once a month or twice a month with a lot of inspiration and all that. And uh, I was sharing a book called The Creative Act recently from Rick Rubin. And it is an absolute gem of a read. And then I was like texting my friend Alex. I'm like, hey, have you read that one? He's like, yes. It's like on my desk. It's like a Bible right now. So. <laughs> I love hearing stuff like that. The shot didn't work. There was like no subject through the hall. Let's see if we can find one here. Oh, wait. There might be something here. Oh, this could be... I don't know if you guys can see, but this could be interesting. But you kind of like get both sides. But only one side kind of gets you kind of need the face of someone. The way oh there we go. Ah uh, come on, come on. You can do this. Nope. Ah Nope. Nope. Alright. All right. Let's go by my gate. See if there is one more shot we can go over get over there before we are fully out of battery and that we are out of time oh look i got the pilot i'm gonna get him through the potato chips now i got the pilot lady earlier so this might be interesting too actually this is a shot i was talking about no it's still more It doesn't come out as nice as I thought. This is a, like a 14, 16 millimeter wide angle shot where the, you get really close to the subject walking and you're shooting upwards and it looks dope. Uh, what's the time like? Ooh, definitely have to go. Wait. Actually, this could be a good shot too. Interesting. All right, let's try to get a few shots of the plane because if you want to tell a complete story of being in an airport, you probably need to get an airplane shot at some point. I would say no, those silhouettes are not the best. Let's see. Maybe we can get. Uh, yeah, this looks. The windows are so dirty here. It's kind of hilarious. Look at this. Ooh, look at this reflection. It looks good. Oh, this this actually looks great because we've got the sky reflection right here. I love it. Boom. Looks epic. I love it. Love it.
It's like kind of a different ambience here. Cool. Oh, I don't need to shoot everything in burst now. Ah. Excuse me. Thanks. Oh, it's fun. All right, I have to board, guys. I'll see you on the other side.